So you don't know anything about Orishas? Well, I guess the reason I say that is because I feel like I'm an authority on all the official like histories and principles of various Orishas, as much as they've kind of been a part of my life for seven years or so. Like I couldn't probably tell you what any of them, even though I've read a few of them. They're books? Um, there's really just a few that I've sort of gone uh, through the past few years. It's, uh, I thought Oshun was in yellow. Uh, no. <laughs> Is it a male one? Yeah. There are male Orishas? I don't even know. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of them are married to. And some of them are married to multiple men, right? Like, I know that a lot of them are married to people, like rulers and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they, what inspired the color pattern here. Uh, so what she got on? Painting I never finished years ago. Oh, okay. Um, so for me, I guess I had heard of Orishas. I don't know when I first heard of them, but when I first, it first became like a, a kind of a influential part of my life was when I started doing Capoeira back in 20, maybe 10 or 11. So, you know, Capoeira is Afro-Brazilian art and <laughs> It has a lot of music tied in with it. I mean, really, it's an integral part of it. And a lot of the songs reference, you know, Afro-Brazilian spirituality, which is largely influenced by Yoruba spirituality. And so they make reference to and like honor the different Orishas. And the first, maybe first song I learned was a song about <clears throat> Yamaja. It was, um, which is my queen, siren, or mermaid of the sea, don't let my boat tip over. And for me, it was like so simple, but so like profound because we're, mm -hmm. you know, it was literal in a sense of that a lot of them were like, these were enslaved people who were, some of them were fishermen, so they were literally saying, don't let my boat, boat tip over. Um, but I kind of took it, you know, the, the kind of symbolic side of it, of just let me stay afloat, um, you know, keep me safe. And she is like the patron of, I believe, uh, travelers and sailors. Um, and I just identify with that from the start you know, in a Capoeira, and I'm trying to think of another song. Uh, it's not coming back to me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I that was kind of my introduction, and I kind of just made my own sort of spiritual practice that was tied in to a large extent with Capoeira, and um, uh, I don't know that, I don't think that the average person who plays Capoeira practices capoeira is that into the spiritual side of person i mean so i think capoeira angola they are to an extent most people are because it's angola tradition now is the traditional form of capoeira mm -hmm. and much is much more involved with like you know the music and the songs and learning the songs and learning the history um but really what kind of got me hooked was we were reading a book about African martial arts uh, when I was in grad school. And of course there was a chapter on Capoeira and um, they talked about its origins. And so the idea 
inverting yourself. Capoeira has a lot of like headstands and handstands and cartwheels. And that inversion being like a, like a reaching into the spirit world to sort of try to get basically the uh, guidance or strength skill <clears throat> your ancestors who fought before you. Um, so I went into Capoeira with that. And so I was just like hooked from the start. And I don't know if I did this in the beginning, but eventually I like, I'd be going, I'd, I'd smoke and go to Capoeira or I'd be, I'd be at the house and I'd smoke and I'd do like my little inversion yeah. and do some movements. And um, uh, I kind of made my own thing of it and didn't do a lot of like studying of the Orishas or studying of what people may do who practice Yoruba spirituality in Nigeria or in Brazil for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, there was always uh, water. I think there was, there was always water involved um, because, um, I mean, it's an interesting thing about, I guess, Afro diasporic religion and it doesn't really have one origin per se because the people were coming from different places. Right. Europe was one prominent group, but then there was also Congo. Um, I mean, they call it Capoeira Angola because of that Congo Angola area, despite the fact that they're referencing all of these Yoruba Orisha. Mm -hmm. um, and the Congo Cosmogram is one of the things actually I learned about in undergrad, where it's like this sort of representation of life and it's basically a circle with like a cross through it and it's like the upper the living world and the lower spirit world and underwater was representative of the spirit world mm. um one of my professors kind of introduced this topic to us he asked us like what what does it mean when someone dreams about fish what do you think what do you have you heard no, I've never heard this. Well, a lot of people answer. I think a lot of African Americans and Afro Caribbean and they, you know, Afro Latino say, "Well, somebody's um, pregnant." Um, and he said that that is rooted from this Congo cosmogram and this belief that the underwater and like fish are representative of like the spirit world, and that someone is those spirits are coming back from that world into this world. So therefore, mm -hmm. sorry, baby. and um, I also felt that like Erica Badu, I was born underwater with three dollars and six dimes, just re like referencing this 360 degree circle of life and water. She's and deep. Yeah. Affirm that, but that was kind of my assumption after. I yeah. Um, she is. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess for me, being the, like, um, what's the word? I don't know, intellectual person I am and <laughs> agnostic, I didn't like dive into this, like, I now believe that these are the gods of the universe and they created life and everything we know. But I took it more as like, I mean, I, I'm definitely open to there being some real spiritual power here. Um, and I guess over the years, developing this idea of like spiritual practice being about, most importantly about like inner growth and transformation more so than about belief and mm -hmm. like blind ritual. Like regardless of what I think about Yamaja or who she was or wasn't, or Oshun, or Oshosi, or Ogun. What I take from them is something that can like empower and encourage me, you know? And sometimes I'm like, I, I mean, hopefully I'm not, I mean, disrespecting anybody's like beliefs or dabbling in anything like dangerous, but I just feel like, no, this is meant to be for the of people so i'm going to use it to my benefit right i'd have my kind of little shrine thing where i'd have like a bowl of water or fish like a fish bowl and um, where I'd go to the water i give offerings in the water 
Uh, once I moved here, I you know I would go to the lake and or a creek in the nearby creek too, and I mm -hmm. money or but anyway or money or whether it was just something that I, that was valuable or attractive. Maybe it was just like some nice stone or something. Um, so I kind of low key made up my own practices, kind of based on what I know is done in different places. Um, I know they have different ceremonies, like in Brazil, where they'll give like offering flowers and stuff, like at the, you know, ocean side of the beach. So I've I've kept the Yamaja candle. I just I'll make my own. You, I've I've had one or two that I actually bought as a Yamaja candle, but a lot of times I'll just buy a blue candle. Mm -hmm. Put your own picture on. Yeah, and I don't necessarily light it daily. What is it supposed to help with? Or when are you supposed to light it? So I know she's sort of like, her principles are not just like the guardians of travelers, but also her utility, but also love. I guess sometimes if I feel like I need some sort of like support, so where where like if someone was interested in learning about the orishas or capoeira where should they turn me google <laughs> so you don't know yeah i don't really have like a go-to site other than okay. for oh for orishas for capoeira i don't hmm. <laughs> how did how did you find your capoeira spot? I found mine because there was a group on Ohio State's campus. Um, the group. So, how, but you have one in Cleveland. Yeah, there are a few in Cleveland. I'm only familiar with like maybe two of them. Um, one you just googled it to find out. No, I have a friend who was in is in the capoeira, and she told me about maybe both of them. Well, Google is our friend. We can encourage the people to go look on the Googles, the interwebs, for more information. Thanks for your your take on things. Uh, no problem. <laughs>